course, and you are posted, excuse me, upon your completion of the basic military training course, you are posted at the Yundum Barracks as a private soldier, correct? Yes, sir, correct. And you later served in the Confederal Battalion in 1987, correct? Correct, sir. And in 1989, you were moved to Yundum Barracks as a provost, correct? Yes, sir, correct. And you later moved on to Farafeni Barracks? Yes, sir. And can you tell us where you are in July 21st of uh, 1994? On the 21st July 1994, I was at Yunum Barat. What duties were you to perform that day? Uh, we were, uh, I was part of the uh, Guard of Honor uh, parade at Yunum Barat. And uh, what was the Guard of Honor about, and for whom? Guard of Honor was the uh, ceremonial parade for His Excellency, then President uh, Sadaud Al-Kairawa Jawara. Where was the Guard of Honor to be held? He said Guard of Honor is to be held at uh, in, uh, at the airport. The Yundum Airport, Yundum as it then Yundum was. Airport. Yes, sir. Did anything happen that day to the soldiers who were to participate in that Guard of Honor? Yes, sir. Kindly tell us. Upon arrival at the Yundum, Yundum, uh, Yundum International Airport on Guard of Honor, uh, we were assembled at one place where we call our FUP, that is form of point, where we normally form up before we go inside the you know, parade ground. So we were there, and then uh, the searching was conducted by the Nigerian. By the Nigerian what? Nigerian soldiers, senior and officers. Can you tell us what that search entailed? Uh, the search purposely was, according to sources, what I what I had and what I uh, realized that uh, some soldiers or oh, we are suspected of you no know, coup plot. A coup d'etat, and being the case, uh, maybe with that rifle we are using on parade, there can be a round with. Uh, uh, I'm trying to understand what you mean. Uh, you said there were suspicions of a planned coup d'etat, yes, and your rifles were searched. Yes, to sir. see whether there were live ammunition yes, in the sir. rifles. Is yes, that sir. what you want to say? Yes, sir. And uh, as a result of that search, was anything found in your rifles? With the parrot personnel, uh, there was no nothing found in our rifle because we were using AK-47 as, you know, as uh, we were using AK-47 at that time. So, but there was no round in any of our rifle, neither inside the magazines. So, uh, you mean there were no life rounds? No yes, life sir. round, yes, sir. Do you recall whether any of the soldiers present was disarmed? Yes, sir. Who, who was it? Military police, then led by 
headed by yeah, Jammy. Uh, they were searched and disarmed because at that point in time, there are pistols. Most, some of their pistols are with rounds. Uh, after that, did the president uh, subsequently arrive? After all sides been conducted, we, we collect arrival and go to the arrival. Yes, the president arrived, sir. And a guard of honor uh, was conducted? Was conducted, sir. And subsequently, you returned to barracks? We returned to barracks, sir. Uh, what was the moral of the, of the soldiers upon return to the barracks? knowing fully well that they were searched at the airport. Upon arrival at, at the camp that is Yundung Barracks, then we are returning rifles to the armory. Definitely, sir, there was, you know, rows. People are shouting, no, we will not return our rifle. Some will not return, we will not return our rifle. This will not happen. Nobody will go. No, nobody will leave this barracks. There was chaos around the camp, all over, noise. Mm. Kindly draw the microphone closer to you, uh, so that it would uh, your speech would be louder. Okay. Thank you very much. So, you're suggesting that the soldiers weren't happy with what happened at the airport? Definitely, sir. And some indicated that they were not going to return their rifles yes, and there sir. was chaos in the camp. Yes, sir. Uh, what did they want to do, seeing that they did not want to return their rifles? Definitely. Failing to, that, uh, refusing to return the rifle means, you know, what was stated that uh, there will be a coup, uh, definitely. It's like, you know, it was in, in, in us. That, and, uh, and, and Mr. Kanye, if you're not comfortable saying something in English, please say it in vernacular. We have interpreters who will interpret it. Uh, no problem. Say sir. whatever you want to say in the language you're most uh, comfortable with. You know? No problem, so, sir. All right, thank you. Uh, so, so you're saying at this stage the soldiers were agitated and uh, they were saying that there would be a coup. And uh, what happened? Did you remain at the barracks that day? As for me, I was in the barracks or around in the evening time, just around 6, 7, then I left home. Because I'm seeing other soldiers are going home. Some are, some, some are remaining, but for me, hence this thing was not done at the airport. It's like there is a failure, so I decided to join those who went home. I, I went home. So you were disappointed it wasn't done at the airport? Yes. That's what you just suggested? Yes. In a sense, you, you knew that there was a planned coup to be done at the airport, correct? Yes. Yes, sir. Do you, can you tell us how you knew that? Uh, how I know that that is, yeah, when, we are, uh, dis when we are, you know, searched, we place down our rifles and we are searched. When we are coming in, our, in the trucks, no, that's the way. I, that's where I know that there is something going to happen, which is good data. Whilst we are coming to the barracks. So that evening, you saw some of the soldiers going home. You also decided to go home. That's what you said, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you remain at home all that night? Yes, sir. I remained at home till the following morning. Can you tell that the following morning would have been July 22nd, 1994, yes, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, can you tell us what you did that day? Say again, sir. 
Can you tell us what you did that day from the time you woke up when I and went up, to work? When I woke up, I dressed up in my home, in my house, as somebody going to work, normal duties. So I joined the buses. Upon arrival at Yundum camp, at the back gate where we used to, where we normally used to pass. When I entered in the camp, you know, I made the situation was completely changed. Changed in a sense that it's like what was said at the airport uh, whilst we are coming to the airport, uh, whilst we are coming to the camp, a coup. On the whole, it is something which is happening. Then I moved to the guard room and I found people, you know, everybody is scattered. People are taking rifles, rounds all over the camp. What do you mean by rounds? That is life round. Am ammunition. Ammunition. Life ammunition. Uh how many soldiers did you find around the guard room? Lot. Lot of soldiers. And did you speak to any one of them? At that point in time, you cannot speak to anybody because definitely, as I told you at initial, that I knew there was a coup plan and it somehow failed to my point of understanding. Upon arrival, when I see the situation like uh, there was no control of uh, drawing rifle, uh, rifle from the armory as it used to be done, I definitely, with experience, I definitely know that, yes, what was stated is really that is happening. How were you dressed at this point? You, you said you were dressed like somebody going to work, but how were you dressed at this time? I dress in, in camouflage. Did you have reason to change your clothing? Sir? Did you have reason to change your clothing uh, at this point after arriving at the, guard, at the guard room? You know, as a soldier, camouflage is serviceable sometimes. It's serviceable under all weather conditions. So when I when I come with that camouflage, when I made the situation change, you know, I also, you know, go to the armory to draw my rifle, when knowing that there is something going to happen, something happening. At that time, I met I saw uh, Yah Jami at the gate, that is main gate. Yah Jami. Uh, uh, Peter Singade, Sana Sabali, and you, uh, you mentioned a Singate. Which Singate did you see? Uh, I said uh, Ed wrong. Edward Singate, not Peter. Edward Singate. Wrong. Did you talk to them? No, I didn't talk to them. I just draw my rifle and see where to have life ammo, life ammunition. So then, at the guard room, there was a case, there was an ammunition, uh, this ammunition uh, case there, where everybody, uh, people are loading their magazine. So I joined them to load my magazine too. And which weapon did you take? I took AK-47. You joined the... Uh, the people who, the soldiers who were making the coup. Right? Yes, sir. And uh, you went to Banjul? Did no, sir. I didn't go to Banjul. I remained in Yundum. When I load my rifle, before departing, I had, you know, uh, Edward Singate, because at that time, main gate and the, uh, and the uh, guard room was the distance is not far. So at that time, you know, people are not talking like in a, in a low volume. People are shouting. So I had uh, a 
that was not uh, talking to your yeah, jammy that sir let's go there is no senior man here you are the senior man let's go you know uh, uh, just for some time and then they left they left why did you remain at Yindum Barracks? Because it's like I am there, but I'm not confident enough that uh, this school can be succeed. So suppose it's like that, I will remain in barracks. <coughs> and uh, Dia Ajame and Edward, did they leave the barracks? All of them left the barracks. And uh, what happened afterwards? They left to, they left to, either, uh, they left to Banjun. And the coup ultimately succeeded, Ultimate, didn't it? Yes, sir. And the Ayajami became chairman of the AFPRC. The AFPRC. And uh, did your career, did you receive any reward for participating in the coup? No, sir. After some times, uh, that very day, uh, you know, at around uh, one o'clock towards two o'clock, I was uh, posted to Banyununing Police Station to, to be in charge of the seized vehicles at that time. That's where I was all along until the situation came. After the situation stabilized, yes, were you promoted? No, no, sir. I was not promoted. And at this stage, what was your rank? I was a couple. And uh, did you remain a couple until November 11, yes, 1994? Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, can you tell us what happened in that event starting from November 10th, 1994? What I remember in November, uh, November 10, either 9 or 10, 8, 9, 10, something like that. One day, the council members came to the barracks. Uh, who, when you say council members, who are you? Who are you referring to? Council members are Edward Singade. What was his rank? Then lieutenant. Yes. Uh, Sadi Buhaidra. Rank? Lieutenant Sadi Buhaidra. Lieutenant Sanasabali. They came to the barracks to address soldiers. Which that barracks are you referring to? Yundum camp. Or Yundum barracks. To address soldiers that they had something that soldiers want to do. That is to overthrow uh, the present regime, AFPRC. They gather us at one place and address us that there's all what was rumors we had about it. So soldiers, be this is yourself from this. One thing, this address was from Sana Sabali, Lebanon Sana Sabali. Yes. Be very careful. He said, Rome was not built in one day. You people know where we, where we take off this country and how you people are, soldiers are before. So to change it is not going to be easy. So, whosoever, you know, involve yourself in anything, it's like that. He was very much aggressive. 
when he was addressing? Who was addressing when he was addressing the group? Lieutenant Sana Sabal. Did other <coughs> members of the council address you as well? Sadibu also talked. Then he was the spokesman of AFPRC. How about Lieutenant Singate and Lieutenant Edward Singate also yeah. talked. All of them talked. And they left. And uh, what happened after that? When they left, in uh, like in 11 November, that on the on the tenth, I was with the RSM Babu Karsanya in the same office. He assigned me to then the former gendarmeries. Some of them are in. Some of them are with us, so but they are not acquainted with uh, with the army uh, drills and duty. So I was assigned by Babukar Sanya to have lesson with them in the field because I was a drill instructor. So that was the preparation I was on. For up to closing time, this is on the 10th, when I left home to go and prepare my uniform. So. And uh, did you come back to the barracks that evening? Uh, I, 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 stay, I stay home till on the, on the 11th, the following day, that is on the 11th day of November. Early morning, I woke up and dressed up, this time in uh, green fatigue dress. That is the instructor, instructor's dress when you are teaching you know, a, a lesson, drill lesson in the field. That is uh, this khaki green with white belt and you need to pull your boots, to sign your boots to the standard of which you want your squad or your soldiers or personnel to adopt because it's like leadership by example. You appear, you appear to them like how you want them to go. At this stage, did you know what was happening in the camp? Upon arrival from from my resident, that is Brikama, when I dress up in my house, as uh, somebody who is going to teach uh, uh, lesson the field, I arrive at the same place, that is the back gate. I was halted by one private soldier by the name Private Koli. At this stage, did you know what was happening in the camp? At the time you arrived there, did you know that something was happening in the camp? When I arrived at the back gate, when I was halted by this man, this private soldier, I said to him, what happened? He said to me that, you don't know what's happened. I said, no, I'm asking you what is happening. He said, double up to the, double up to the guard room. I cooperate because he was having weapon. I was with empty hand. With, I was with my cane stick. What, what, what time did you arrive at the barracks? It's, it's around between 7 to 8, because normal reporting time is 07.45 NLT. And did you, so you walked to the, to the guard room? When I cooperate, I double up to the guard room. Upon arrival at the guard room, hope I met the situation again more even terrible than before. I said to people, I said to him that, Koli, I was asking you what happened, you don't tell me. 
uh, there is a coup. I said, who is it? Yes. Who is it? Lebanon Baro. Lebanon Basiru Baro. And he left. I, I, I was in the guard room at that time. I entered into the guard room. From the guard room, I go to the RSM's office. And I who, was was not, the, who was the RSM at this time? At that time, Babuka Sanya. Proceed, please. At that time, I was not comfortable because because of my appearance. One private soldier by the name Keba Drame, may he so rest in perfect peace. Kanye, do take your time, please. If you need a break, we would give you a break. You able to proceed, Mr. Yes, Sam? Yes. yes. Sir, this private drama is from Jara. Sekunda. This private man, this private soldier, called me, he said, Nkroma, in our language, in the local language. Let's go inside my room. I give you my uh, my camouflage, you change dress. If council member or council member meet you here in this order, like if Sana Sana Sabal meet you in this order, he rather kill you or you will go to jail. Then it's it's like you know somebody who is forcing me. I cooperate with him. I, I, I go to his house. I change dress. Within 15 minutes, council members arrive. Sana Sawal and the teams arrive. And what happened when they arrived? Upon their arrival, Um, there is a truck, uh, there is a big truck, you know, uh, guarded around the flagpole. And uh, do you know how the truck got there? Well, they came, they came with their vehicle, and the, the truck also was following, following them. So the truck, the Sanasabali, and the people he was with came with the truck? Yes, sir. And, uh, did Sanasabali, who, who else did he come with? You, you mentioned Sanasabali. He came with people and a truck. Sanasabali. Who did he come with? Sanasabali, Lebanon Sanasabali, Lebanon Sadibu Hydra, Lebanon uh, Edward Singate, Lebanon Yankuba Ture. And Lebanon Peter Singati. Did they come just them or they were they, accompanied? They, they are accompanied by their orderlies and other soldiers, other private soldiers. Do you recall 
who these orderlies were. At that time, you cannot have time to watch on those people because the truck they were carrying, you know, everybody was shouting. They were shouting that Ifelejang, Ifelejang in the in the in the local language. What does Ifelejang mean? Ifelejang, that is, they are here. That is the dead. Uh, everybody was inquisitive to know what is in that truck. So that's the time myself, I went to the truck, I climbed up and see two people, two soldiers lying down. That is Basiru, Kama, uh, Basiru Baro and Lebanon Dotfal. That is Lebanon Basiru Baro and Lebanon Dotfal. Yeah. Were they alive at this stage? No, sir. They were completely dead. How do you know they were dead? Elite Council, by, as he composes himself, I just want to remind uh, the people in the audience that mobile phones are not allowed or any recording devices. So can they please respect the rules of the House? Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Kanye, if you need to take a break, we would give you a break. Uh, but take your time, please. Council, sir, this, this Basir Baro, uh, this left number um, as Basir Baro, is completely dead. As I climb up to see one private soldier by the name Bachi Samba Jallo, he said to me that, you see your relative, Jaram Kol, I told the Kalaman, he also repeated that, Jaram Kol, he had a brother Jallo. No, at okay. that time, Council members with their audi, their audi even are more crazy than even the, uh, the, the council members. He, uh, he, for, he gave me pistol to fire on the Bashir, Bashiru. Unfortunately for me, the pistol, I, I, I squeezed the trigger, but the pistol was empty. There was no round, live round in the chamber, neither in the magazine. Uh, Madam Chair, I think we need to give the witness a break. So you want us to take? Five? We, we okay. don't know, but perhaps ten. And then we, we will take a 10 minute break and come back in 10 minutes, sir. Thank, thank you. you very much, Madam Chair.
have to hold on a hold on for a few minutes. The chairperson is out of the room at the moment. She'll be here very shortly. All right, sir. Thank you, witness, for coming back, lead counsel. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Kanye, are you able to proceed now? Yes, you are telling us that Basiru Baro was completely dead at this stage, and you said Baj Samba Jalo uh, came to you and said, you Jarankas, uh, and he said something else. I don't want to paraphrase it. You said it in vernacular. Can you tell us what that means in English? What Bachsamba Jalo said to you? Bachsamba Jalo told me that when I climb up to, to know what is in the vehicle, uh, what is in the truck, I saw Basiru Baro and Dot Fall. That's the time Bachsamba Jalo told me that. You know, look at your brother. You the Jarankas. You people want to be a president. And he, he threw a force a pistol to me to fire onto Bashiru Baro. Unfortunately for me, when I squeezed the trigger, the pistol uh, trigger, there was no round, there was no noise. Like the rifle, the pistol was empty. So, so I, I get down with, that, with the pistol. What rank was Bajsambajalo? Bajsambajalo at that time, I think Lance Koppel or so. But it's like uh, at that point in time, council, member, council members oddly, oddly and also ever close to them are even more crazy than even they themselves. Uh, and Bajsambajalo, uh, who was he attached to at this time? Edward Singer, uh, Lieutenant Edward Singate. And what role did he play in Edward Singate's entourage? 
he was a driver to Edward Snowden. And uh, when you pulled the trigger and nothing happened, mm. what did you do with the pistol you were given? I didn't even return the pistol to him. I, I, I came down with the pistol. And <clears throat> when you saw Basir Ubaro, what injuries did you see on him? The head was swollen, seriously. It's like the head was, you know, as, as counsel, the head was totally destroyed. Swollen blood all over. And uh, dot fall. Lieutenant dot fall. Uh, were there any other people in that truck? No, sir. Only two of them. After when I dropped from the truck, less than a few minutes, you know, the said bus jello pushed them down and they dropped, they fall down outside on the floor. What do you say to the suggestion that there was somebody else in the, well, first, what do you say to the suggestion that <coughs> dot fall was not completely dead at the time. The body was still shaken. Sir, that fall was completely dead. What do you say to the suggestion <coughs> that you shot both Basir Ubaro and that fall to finish them off? Sir, I say no to that. I didn't shot anybody. They were completely dead. You intended to do. You pulled the trigger. There was yeah, no yes, yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. For that, yes. So, Suppose there is round in the camera. Then I would say, I, I, you know, I fire onto them, dead body. What do you say to the suggestion that there was another person in the truck? You stepped on him showed your torch on him or signed your torch on him and called him body. Sir, at that time, there, there is nothing like using torch light because it is bright daylight, daylight. And definitely speaking, there was nothing or where somebody can use torch light. These two people I mentioned, Honestly speaking, I am on the court board. I saw them. Only that. I was following. I heard somebody say, no, I call him. But no. Definitely, sir. After you came down from the truck, what happened next? When they dropped down from the truck, from the truck I was moving towards where people are standing. Then uh, Lieutenant Sana Sabali called me, Kabul Kani. I said, Sir, he said to me that, look at your brother. You, uh, in, in, in the Maninga language, Ibadimo. Ibadimo Jel. Arul Jaram Kolo. I love the Kalaman Salti. The same word as Bach told me, Bachama mentioned. Can you translate that into English, please? That is, that is to say, you the Jarankas want to be a president. Is this is how you can be the president? N what he said that, and he was pointing at somebody. Who was he pointing at? He was pointing at Bashir Baro. You see Bashir Baro, left number Bashir Baro. This time, you know, it's Bashir Baro. Next time, it's you. So, Council, when he mentioned, when he pointed at me that next time is you, where I was, uh, it's like my life is in his hand because he was with pistol and AK-47 rifle. How did you feel when you heard that? So it's like. I am, I am dead, I'm not dead, like a dead man walking. 
within the meets. Because at that point in time, uh, Lebanon Sana Savali have the order of arrest and detain and kill. Do you know where that order came from? Well, as he's been, he's been the vice chairman of APRC. He also have had maybe that instruction may come from, but because of his action. Could you take it step by step? You say this instruction may have come from. Could you complete your sentence, please? I said maybe because he is the vice chairman, so he have somebody who is heading him. I said maybe that instru instruction may come from either him or that uh, the head. But and I don't who know. was the head at the time? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, Jame was the chairman AFPRC. So, so you're suggesting that Sana Sabali uh, had the order maybe from Yaya Jame? Maybe, may not, said. because Sana was out of anything you think of. Can you explain a bit further? What do you mean by that? Sars. You, you may say it in Mandinka. You can translate it, please. Uh, feel free to speak in vernacular if you need to. No, what I mean out of everything, Sana was, uh, he was crazy. He was aggressive. He was like a wounded lion. He listened to nobody. He looked into nobody's eye. And he have no fear for anybody. He have no regard for anybody. Only gunshot and arrest. And then what happened after... Sana told you that you see your Jaranka brother, you Jarankas, you want to be president. What happened after that? As I said, I was, I was confused because thinking that any slightest mistake done by me, I'll be a victim like my brother. So he called this man, uh, Captain Maron, let Kanye be with you. Then Who was Captain Maron? Captain Maron was the CO 1BN, 1 Infantry Battalion, you know. By CO, you mean commanding officer? Commanding officer. Of 1 Infantry Battalion, Correct. BN, Yundum Barracks? Correct. Yeah? And what happened after that? I followed that man. I followed Captain CO in his office. Uh, sir, this evil man was very... I can say, you know, helpful to me at that point in time by telling me that What does that mean? That is, this boy, this small boy is crazy. Don't mind him. Let's go to my office. And who was he referring to? Sir? Who was he referring to? Lebanon Sana Savali. And uh, you went with Captain Marong to his office? To his office. And what happened afterwards? I was there for some time. Then, you know, the, uh, these uh, dead bodies, uh, from there, I came uh, from, the, from the CO's office. I said to the CO, then, can I go out? He said, you can go out, but here is your place. Always you have to be here. That's what he said. So I don't want you to have trouble with him. I said, okay. So when I stepped out from his office, from the CEO's office, like going to the guard room, you know, the uh, one other sergeant by the name Sergeant Basiru Kamara, yes, also from Jara. Then they didn't depart yet. This Sergeant Basiru Kamara was coming from, he was naked naked in a sense there was nothing no cloth on him and he was tired his arms were tired at the back as he was passing he stood the said sana sabal called me kanye i i turned and looked at him he was standing then with edward Sinatin. 
des aides parmi les gens qui ont fait ça. Je suis là. Je suis là. Je suis là. Je suis là. Je And then this Bashiru Kamara was going, like we are following him. Just in the next, before we arrive around Kukau's end, Fafanyan also, Sergeant Fafanyan also came out. From where? It's like the same, uh, I just saw him around, you know. And then, and, uh, and how was he dressed? He's, he also he is also naked, and hands are tied at the back. So these were captured soldiers. captured people. And Edward called him fucking join him. He told him to fucking join Basil Kamara. And where were they headed? Myself and Edward was. Together with these two people, they are heading us to around the cookhouse house end. And I was instructed by then Sana and Edward to open fire on them, causing death. Did you do that? Yes, sir. Did you kill? Sir? Who? You killed both of them. No, at that point in time, I cannot tell you that my round only touched uh, uh, all of them because it's me and Edward. So, and these these two uh, these two people also are I, they are in our front. So, but you aimed, you pointed your weapon at them, correct? At them, yes, sir. How about Edward? Did he point the same, his weapon the same, at the them? same thing? And you fired at Bost, correct? Yes, sir. Did Edward fire at Bost? Very well. More rapid even than me, I can say, because I, I knew why I said that, because it's like I am killing my own brother. I'm instructed to kill my own brother. So definitely speaking, at that point in time, it's like I have no choice. I have no choice. So. And uh, upon firing, what happened to Sergeant Fafanyang and Kamara? Sir, they are dead. You, you contributed with Edward Singate in killing Sergeant Fafanyang and Basiru Kamara, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, at this stage, which senior army officers were present? I know you have mentioned members of the council. S Lieutenant Sana Sabali, Lieutenant Sadi Haidara, Lieutenant Edward Singate, and Lieutenant Yankuba Ture. At this point in time, were any other senior army personnel present? Yes, sir. Colonel Babukar Jata was there. Did any of these senior officers do anything to stop you from killing these people? Nobody, sir. Nobody stopped us. Nobody even talked to us. Nobody even... You, you can't see any sign of... Oh, sir. To my surprise, these people are... Small boys, sir, me, I am in the five of the National Army. Sana is in the 12. Edward is in the 15. And there are people who even, people senior them. Well, at that point in time, nobody dared to tell them, stop, don't do this. No, because of what? Sana is, Sana is with weapon. If you say no, he will kill you. If you say no, he will arrest you. 
and not him who will come and arrest you, but he will instruct the boys to come and arrest you, and they will mercilessly deal with you. Very dangerous, sir. After killing these two uh, men, Sergeant Fafanyang and uh, Asiru Kamara, what happened next? They were, we carry, we take them to the, to the, uh, one side of the camp, uh, that is opposite senior NCS mess, the right corner of the uh, Yundum camp, where they were buried, dug and buried them. Who dig, he, who dug the grave? A lot of soldiers. I was among. Who else can you remember? Uh, council members or least. Who can you remember amongst them? This batch was there. Batch, by batch, you referring to Batch Samba Jalo? Batch Samba Jalo. Lance Corporal, correct? Lance Corporal, yes. Who else? And. Sir, I think. A lot of soldiers are there. A lot of soldiers are there. We just wish to establish who you could recall being present at the time. JCB, private JCB. Last name for JCB? Huh? What was his last name? JCB Mendy. He was a private at the time. At that time. Yes. Oddly for who? At huh? the time. Oddly for who? JCB. Oddly to. You can't recall, you can't recall. Uh, uh, no. Who else was present? BNJI. Who else? He and I. Do, does he have does he have an alias? Uh, another name by which he is known, say a nickname or something like that. No, we call him Babanjai. That is what we call Bianjai. Okay, and who else? Another Binjai that is called Bunkal. Another you said B Njai? Yes. And his nickname is what? Bunkal. Jai Punkal. Okay, okay. Who else? Sir, I can't remember all. Okay, that is that is fine. And uh, what happened to the body of or to the bodies of Barrow, Lieutenant Barrow and Lieutenant Fal? All uh, that that uh, digging, after digging, uh, those, uh, the, uh, the four people were buried there. That is Bashiru Baro, Bashiru Kamara, Fafanyang, and Dotfal. They were all buried in one grave? In one yard, in one graveyard. Uh, and uh, you visited Yundum Barracks with the investigators. Yes, were sir. you able to pinpoint the grave to the investigators? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much for that. After burying these individuals, these dead uh, bodies, what happened next? From there, I returned back to CEO's office. Did anything else happen that day? Yes, sir. At around 1 o'clock, Two o'clock. After council members depart, after at around one o'clock to two o'clock, they came back again. Who came back? Can council, you tell us? Council members. That is, uh, Lieutenant Sana Savali, Lieutenant Yankuwa Ture, Lieutenant Sadibu Hydra, Lieutenant Edward Singate, Lieutenant Peter Singate. Sadi Bhaida and with their oddlies. 
this time around was Babukar Jada. Babukar Jada was there. With Babukar Jada, yes, sir. This second time, Babukar Jata was also present. Was there. That is your testimony. Yes, sir. And what happened when they came? When they came, they went straight to Antrum, that is senior officer's mess. And what happened there? Do you know? Definitely what happens in that senior's and uh, that officer's mess, I don't know because I was at uh, CEO's office. But well, they call CEO to join them there. So when CEO comes... By CEO, you are referring to Captain Maron, Captain right? Maron, yes, sir. Okay, tell us what happened. When CEO... Uh, upon arrival of CEO, uh, that's the time I know. He told me that the captured people are going to be executed. Who told you that? Uh, Captain Maron. What happened after that? Then I was with him in his office. Just in the next 10, uh, 10 15 minutes' time, you no, know, we came out, myself and him, because it's like I'm also his orderly or a guard. Right? So we came out and then we meet council members all with their vehicle and they. Uh, with the land, the, the, the land rover was called. Uh, so the land rover, and then uh, the captured people were uh, on board the land rover. Who do you remember to be on board? Lieutenant Jibril Said. Yeah. Go ahead. Lieutenant Jibril Said. Lieutenant Abulai Ba, Lieutenant Buba Jame, Lieutenant Lamin Dabo, Lieutenant Bakar Mani, Kedet Silla Amar. Who else? Yes. And they are the same time, the same person instruct me to onboard that land rover. Uh, Kabul Kanye, I fucking get on board. Uh, what do you say to the suggestion that you removed these officers from the detention room, tied them? tied their hands behind their backs and shoved them inside the Land Rover? Me? Yes, you. No, sir. I was not present the time they were captured. One, I was not present the time they were tied. I was not present the time they were on board the Land Rover. I met them in the Land Rover. Uh, bringing the Basa, that is the parlor we call it, to bus them, I was there. When I was told to onboard the vehicle, I, on, I, I, I climbed up. Somebody, I don't know, who said, Sir, but well, this is not safe. Why not we, we, we look for something to cover them? Yes. So the bus I was looked and we covered them with. You, you, you mean ta tarpaulin was put over, over their heads? Over their heads. Because the land rubber is without you know, cover. Did you get on board as instructor? Yes, sir. Uh, I was the only person at the back of the Land Rover. Then I don't know who was the driver, but one boy by the name uh, Kanilai Bubajame was in front of the vehicle. What was his rank, Bubajame? At that time, whether Lance Kobul or Kobul, I don't know. And uh, how was this the only vehicle that was being ready to leave the barracks? No, uh, no council members, you know, they came with their vehicle. And uh, did each council member have his own vehicle? 
Each and every one of them are with their own people. How about their orderlies? Their orderlies join them. So how many vehicles did you have in that convoy? Definitely speaking, I can't exactly give you the figure, the, the, the number of the vehicles, uh, but it, it is more than five vehicles. And what happened after that? From there, we left the Yunong barracks to the, to the along the road from Birkama to Nyambai Forest End. We, 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 we go up to, when, when we pass, like, we pass Farado, going towards Birkama. Before we reach for that uh, beans factory, Nyambai Forest, there is a road on the, on the right side of the, on the, on the right side of the road. That's where we branch up, going towards Jambur N. Like we pass Farado, but we are not yet in Birkama, inside forest. Yes. And what happened after that? We went right inside the bush, upon arrival of where they want the leader who was in front, I think, then, I don't know, it may be Sana, because as far as he's the vice chairman, you know, in the army, we respect, you know, well, like seniority or appointment title. He may be in front, but then I don't know. So all the cars were, you know, parked, and the, the Land Rover arrived. So the Basa was removed from them, and they were dropped down. Taken to At the this stage, the detainees, mm -hmm. were they restrained? Were they tied? They were tied. Hands behind their back? Hands behind the back. And then what happened? They and, dropped down? And then they dropped down, taken to, uh, for a distance in front of us. We the, uh, uh, the, we and the council members, I was part of them. Council members with their oddly, we line up and facing them. Uh, were the captured soldiers facing you or did they have their backs to you? They are giving us the, their back. And, uh, they were grouped together or they were standing in a line? It's like a form of an extended line. And then what happened after that? And then from there, Sadi Buhadra, Governor Sadi Buhadra said, yes, I want to ask you one question. Suppose we come across with you people, what is going to happen? No response from them. Yes. No response from them. Uh, who was he asking that question? Lebanon Sadibu Hydra. Who, to whom wa, 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 was he that was question He was asking addressed? the captured people. Proceed. No response. No response. From there, uh, Sana Sabal said, Say your last prayers. I remember Kedet Silla, Ahmad Silla, who said, Sir, if you are to kill us, kill us with support weapon, and we meet it in the next world. Yes. Did anybody else say something? Nobody said nothing. Buba Jame, Lieutenant, did he say something? Yes, sorry. Buba Jame said, he's a Zandamere, Sir, Sir, Al-Kanamfa, Al-Insorong, 
in the local language. That is, uh, don't kill us. Please lock us. Take us to jail. Now I want to establish who was present at that stage. Uh, you told us that the captured soldiers were put in an extended line and uh, they gave their backs to you. Uh, your group, tell us who was there. I understand you did indicate that the council members were there, but yes. give us a list of the people who were present. Lieutenant Sanabi Sabali, yes. Lieutenant Sadibu Hydra, Lieutenant Edward Singade, Lieutenant Peter Singade, Colonel Babu Garjata, Lamin Fati, LJJ, myself, BNJ, private BNJ, and private BNJ Ponkal, JCB Mendy, and private Suso, who is, he was, he is a Zanamere. This is what I can remember. Council members are as follows. Uh, Sanabi Sabali, Lebanon Sana Sabali, Lieutenant Sadibu Hydra, Lieutenant Yankuba Ture, Lieutenant Edward Singade, Lieutenant uh, Peter Singade, um, uh, Colonel Babgar Jada. That group you mentioned, how were they standing? Did they just stand in circle, in a group, haphazardly, or in straight line? We are just standing as a form of a, also an extended line, but in group, not spread out like this, but we are together of a chance, you know, where you can fire. And uh, what happened after that? After the conversation, say your last prayers. Sana gave the order of fire. And what happened? And we fire on them. Okay. When Sana gave the order to fire, as far as you recall, did some of you stand aside and not participate in what was going to happen? Sir, at that time, I can't remember. My question is, mm -hmm. did any members of the group go away and refuse to participate? Nobody. All of us participate. And you, at that time, I don't think, you cannot, you dare not even to leave that end. Sana is there. You'll join them. After Sana gave the order, what happened? We opened fire on them. Causing death. You said we opened fire on them. Who are you referring to as we? All the people present there. I will list names and you will tell me. Yes, sir. Sana Sabali. Sir. Did he participate? He participated. He fired his weapon? He fired. Edward Singate? He fired. Did he participate? Yes. Yanko Bature? Yes. Sadi Haidara? Yes. Babu Karjata? Yes. Jai Ponkal. Yes. JCB Mendy. Yes. Fati. Yes. And yourself. Yes, sir. Uh, Madam Chair, I think it's a minute to the first break. I ask my last question and then we go for break. You said, and death occurred. What do you mean by death occurred? You know, they die. Could you confirm that uh, these soldiers 
were all hit by multiple bullets. What do you mean by multiple bullets? By many bullets. Yes, because it was rapid. And as a result, what happened to Lieutenant Jibril Say? Jibril Say, he died. Lieutenant Lamin Dabo? He died. Lieutenant Buba Jame? He died. Lieutenant Aliuba? He died. Ablai, Ablai Ba. Ablai Ba. Yes, God. Does he have another name? Achopi. And uh, Lieutenant Bakari Mane? Yes, Nancho. And, uh, and Cadet Amadusila? Yes, sir. They all died? They all died. Um, I think we should leave it at that for the time being. Uh, we go for our 30 minutes break and uh, we return after that. Thank you very much, Mr. We get back here at 12 noon. Thank you.
we can commence. Thank you. Yes, Madam Chair, we are ready to proceed. Uh, Uh, welcome back, Mr. Kanyi. Um, are you able to proceed? Yes, sir. May I just remind you that you are under oath and everything you say must be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Are we together? Yes, sir. Before the break, uh, you were telling us how the captured officers were killed in a forest near Nyambai, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, in your testimony, you indicated that the following officers were killed. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Jibril Sey, sir. Lieutenant Lamin Dabo, Lieutenant Buba Jame, Lieutenant Aliuba, Abdullah Iba, Lieutenant Bakari Mane, and Cadet Officer Amadou Sila, correct? Yes, sir. Do you know a person called EMCC? Yes, sir. Do you know what happened to him? Well, he's also killed, but not at the at the at the uh, at the forest. Um, where was he killed? Well, I was not present the time he was killed. Upon arrival from the forest, we found his dead body. From reliable sources said that he was killed by somebody called Mbub, but then I was not present. What Mbub? Uh, the, the last couple Mbub, but then the first name. What was his rank, as you said? Lance couple. Can you give us a description of him? He's a tall and black in complexion. Which, which part of the armed forces did he work? He worked, if I can remember, in the military police. Mm. Was he at any point in time posted at State House? I can't remember. I'll give you two names, and you will tell me whether one of them is correct. Abdullah Mbub or Babu Kanbub? If you don't know, tell us you don't know. Well, these two names, I can't. You know, we used to so name and the rank than even the phone name. Do you know which part of Gambia he hailed from? Is from Nyomi. Uh, thank you very much. And he was the somehow he was even participated in like is is the deputy imam at that time at the one bm. He was deputy imam at one bm. Yes. And the information you receive is that he killed EMC sir. Yes sir. That's what I heard. Insane. I asked you earlier uh, a question which apparently was not captured in the recording. Mm -hmm. I asked you who was present at Yundum Barracks, at, sorry, at the forest when these captured officers were being executed. And you named names. And the answer you gave was as follows, that the council members and senior officers who were present included Lieutenant 
Sana Sabali, Lieutenant Edward Singate, Lieutenant Sadi Haidara, Lieutenant Yankuba Ture, Lieutenant Peter Singate, Colonel Babu Karjata, uh, and then the others. Now let's talk about the orderlies. Which orderlies were present? Uh, only uh, Lamin Fati. Who else? Buba Jame Kanilai. Proceed. Bienjai. Yes, proceed. Bienjai. Does he have an English? Phone call. All right. Who else? Jesse Bimendi. Yes. Uh, Lamin Marong. Lamin Marong, what was his, his rank? I think at that time, Lance Cobble also. Among the senior officers, uh -huh. uh, you mentioned Babu Kar ba Babu Karjata. Apart from Babu Karjata and council members, was there any other senior officer present? I can't remember. Do you know a person called Mumudu Baji? I know him. Was, sir. He, was he present? At the forest? No, yes. sir. Don't see him there. Was he present at Sorry. Was he present at Union Barracks in the morning? No, sir. You did not see him there? I didn't see him there. The second half of the day, did you see him there, Mudubaji? No, sir. I didn't see him there. How about Captain Marong? Did he go to the forest? He didn't go to the forest. He was the CEO then. So the only senior officer who was present, apart from the council members, was Babu Karjata? Yes, sir. Which I can't remember. Yes, sir. Um, so... After these officers were killed in the forest, what happened next? They were uh, well, taken back again, uh, put them in the same Land Rover, and bring them back to the you know, barracks. And, uh, and then we dig and bury them there. At this stage, where were the council members when they were being buried? They were in the ante room, that is, uh, officers' mess. Did all of them return to Yundum Barracks at this at this stage? End of exercise, all of them, we all come back to uh, Yundum Barracks. So, and the Land Rover was to the Did you participate in the burial? Yes, sir. Do you recall who else participated in the burial? We got from the bush. We all participated. Uh, you told us that the officers went to the ante room, the officers mess. Yes, sir. So when you now say that all of us who went to the bush participated in the burial, who are you referring to? I'm referring to the oddlies, the junior, of the junior uh, ranks. And after that burial, do you, in fact, do you recall at what time this event took place, the burial? As I said, at initial stage, this was around after one or two with the party to the bush, 
and and in our time, like around three o'clock, we are back. And what happened after these officers were buried? When the council members left. What do you say to the suggestion that Jibril say he was very tall and his feet would not fit inside the grave? Was that true? Sir, no, sir. What do you say to the suggestion that you took an axe and chopped off his legs such that the body would fit in the grave? No, sir. Sir, to be candid enough, they were not organized being buried. So there, but there was nothing like, you know, you know, these people, they are already dead. And looking at these soldiers, sir, more especially, Jibril say, this man is a very helpful, helpful man to the soldiers. He even, you know, go, go, go to one Lebanese man in Bakau here, Lacing with him, bringing goods to the soldiers for credit basis. This man is very pious and very helpful and very able. My, product, my progressive in the army definitely lays in the hands of him. And I was, when I was posted at Kudang, I was living in the same house with his brother by the name Aliu. Sir, billahi wallahi, this man Aliu, his brother, to see, for me to meet with him in the same house on that, uh, at any given time, it will be only night time, like when I come to bed or he come to bed. Very respectful and very helpful to me. What God do I have? Or somebody who already dead, sir, they were not organized being buried. But there is nothing like cutting somebody's hand or harming again after yeah. seeing the dead. Uh, we want to get this clear. Is it true that his feet were sticking out in, in the grave? No, sir. You did not have any problem burying him? No problem, sir. Did you have anything to do with his feet? No, sir. To make the burial happen? Also? No, sir. That's what I'm telling you. I have no problem of, you know, it's just pushing them. That's what I said. They, they are not organized in burial, but there is not like harming or cutting or reducing or so. No, sir. They were buried uh, yes. by yourself and the orderlies, orderlies. and the officers left Yundum Barracks, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Did you have a debriefing after this event? No, sir. Uh, the next day, did you hear what the government said happened regarding November 11? Say again. Did you hear in the news uh, what the government said happened with regards to November 11? Did you, re did you hear the government announcement about what happened? Uh, no, sir. What do you say to the suggestion that the government announced that there was an attempted coup d'etat and some soldiers lost their lives in the fighting. Is that true? That has been said there, sir. Is that true? Well, I was not present on the fight or at the fight. I was all alone at Yundum. And the time you were present, officers were executed and not killed during fighting, correct? They were, they were captured. And ex yes, two officers, yes sir, rather. They were captured and executed? Yes sir. And uh, after November 11, what happened to you and your career? 
I was, as I said, I was with Maron, uh, CEO Captain Maron. Then, for some times, I was moved back to my company, which was Bravo Company. But uh, the time I was with Maron, I was definitely thinking that maybe onto our, you know, participation or involvement in this, attaching me to Maron, there will be a compensation. But of which there was nothing absolutely. Where I was, are you? Were you at any point in time warned not to disclose what happened at Yundum Barracks and in the forest? Were you warned to keep it a secret? You know, as a, not, we are not gathered and briefed us to that. Were you personally told to keep it a secret? Nobody warned me of that. Okay. So what happened to your career after November 11? You said you thought you would be compensated, but you were not compensated. I was moved to my, I was moved to Bravo Company for some times. Then I was in 1995-96, 95, I was transferred to the training school at Fajara. And who was the commandant of the training school at the time? Then it was Captain Peter Singate. At this stage, he was a captain. He right? was a captain. And uh, you were there until. Uh, when did you move from Bravo, from uh, GNATS, the Gambia National Army Training School? I was there up to end of. Uh, uh, 96, 97, I was moved back to Yundu, where I completed my term in December 97. I went on to retire. I voluntarily retired. Do you recall participating in an operation organized by Edward Singate? Yes, sir. Do you recall the exact date? I can't remember the exact date and the month. Well, can, can you tell us, but can you recall the events that happened? Yes, sir. I was one time in my uh, home, Burkama, where I was picked by one uh, BK Jata. Uh, what does those initials stand for? Well, we used to call him BK Jata. That is his name, but no. I know him as BK Jata. What was his rank at the time? Uh, staff Sergeant. Do you know where he is presently? Some said I had one of his. Uh, as I, I had somebody saying he, he's in America, or so but I've never spoke to him. So you said on this day, BK Jata picked you up from yes, your home yes, in Delkama. Yes, sir. At what time was it? This was late in the evening, around. Uh, five to six or not. And he said to me that Edu says, let me come and pick you and we collect Paliu, Paliu Gomez to go and meet him in his residence at Cape Point with Tumul Tamba. At this stage, were you on duty? I was it was like, you know, everybody is on standby. So we used to close and come home. Like, I was not on duty. Did you agree to go with BK Jata? Yes, I did.
and uh, you joined him and left. How? How? What? What means did you? By what means did you leave Birkama? He came with a vehicle. What? Uh, what vehicle belonging to who? He's the one who is driving the vehicle. So. Was it a military vehicle? No, it is not a military vehicle. No, sir. So he picked you up. Where did you go after he picked you up? And we go and pick uh, uh, one boy by the name Ali Gomez. Was he a soldier? Yes, sir. What was his rank? Staff sergeant. Where was he deployed? Where did you pick him up from? We pick him up at around. He was, you know, staying at um, Lolong Corner, but then we pick him up around uh, around Bathurst towards uh, Westfield End to Macau. Did he know that you were coming? Well. Biggest, biggest said he spoke to him. You know, at that time, telephone facilities were not much. I don't know how did he communicate to him. But you found him along back. Uh, 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 yes, yes. And uh, when you came to that area, you were expecting to find him there. Yes, please. And then you picked him up. We right? picked him up. Where did you go next? We go to uh, Cape Wren. Uh huh. And what happened? At Edu's, Edu, Edu's, Edu's place, Edward Singhata's place. At this stage, how many of you were in the vehicle? Myself, BK Jada, Tumbul Tamba, and Pali Ugames. Where did you pick Tumbul Tamba from? BK came with Tumbul to me. And Tumbul, does he have another nickname? No, that's his name, Tumbul Tamba. Does he have a nickname, another name by which he is known? No. Does the name Malia Mungu mean anything to you? Or that's not Tumbul Tamba? Right? No, Tumbul, that is not Tumbul Tamba. Tumbul, does he have a nickname, as okay. far as you know? No, I don't know. So the four of you yes, please. went to Cape Point. Cape Point. Which house did you go to in Cape Point? Captain Edward Singares, sir. And uh, was it a private house? It's a private house. No, it, it's like, you know, that is his, he's allocated with that place. We call the, I don't know, it, uh, former, you know, former VP's resident or Yes, that's why I decided. So you're referring to the vice president's residence located at Cape Point? Yes, please. And what happened when you got there? There, you know, uh, uh, Edward, we are briefed by Edward that, okay, don't worry, we are here. We are going to get rid of one fucking country. Could you repeat what you just said so we get exactly what you said? He said to us that, okay, we are going to get rid of that fucking country. One fucking country. We are going to get rid of one fucking country. country yes. At this stage, did he tell you who was he, who he was referring to? No, sir. But when he said that, you knew you were going to go on an operation, correct? Yes, sir. What Did kind of operation we don't know because we at that time we are not with uh, rifle AK-47, meaning AK-47. But what did you understand him to mean when he said we are going to get rid of one fucking cunt? What did you understand him to mean? It's like at that time definitely all of us we are wondering who is this man and what kind of operation we are going do you understand what he meant by getting rid of somebody? Did you understand that? No, sir. Did you ask him questions? 
No, sir. When this briefing was being made, who was present? Four of us and his brother, Peter Singati. And of course, Edward himself. Edward himself. Six Mr. of you. Yes. And uh, did Peter Singate say anything? No, sir. And what happened after Edward briefed you and said, we are going to get rid of one fucking cunt? What happened after that? Uh, he, he, you know, he got up and then he drive his car, then followed by us and Peter also followed with his car. So there were three vehicles? Yes. Edward in one vehicle? Yes. Uh, the four of you in another vehicle? Yes. And then Peter in a third vehicle? Yes. Did they tell you at this stage where you were, where they were taking you? Before we left in his uh, residence, Peter is the one who said to us that, uh, he said to me that I drive to Yankuba's place, Yankuba's residence. Which Yankuba are you referring to? Captain Yankuba today. At this stage, were you told what you were going to do at Captain Yankuba Ture's residence? No, sir, we are not told. Did you know exactly where you were going? We are going to, I know that we are going to Yankuba's residence. What, of what, I don't know at the moment. Did you know exactly where that residence was located at this time? While you were in the vehicle going, mm -hmm. did you know where Yankuba's residence was? It's like, it's, it's around Senegambia and well, definitely right now I can't identify the place. Did you ever go to Yankuba's place before this event? Not at all. Did you ever go to Yankuba's place after this event? Not at all. At what time of the day did you get there on this occasion? This was around, you know, uh, after seven to eight. Did you, well, apart from knowing the general direction that it, it was around Senegambia area, uh, did, you, did you know exactly where the, pla where the place is located? Tell us what you know, what you can remember. Sir, so definitely, at, at this point in time, right now, you know, it's been a while, I can't exactly you know, remember the place now. But before you left, mm -hmm. you did not know where Yankuba's tourist house was located? Yes, sir, because I've never visited there. This was the, this was my first time to visit to visit it. On the way while going, were you told who this fucking cunt was, quote unquote? Upon arrival, not on the way. Upon arrival at the residence, we are told by Edward that okay, wait for us here we are going to the airport. Then I can remember, if I can fully remember, there was an activity at the airport. Either the chairman was leaving the Yaa Jamia to somewhere else, or he is coming. You see? So they are going to see him off or receive him, something like that. The activity was at the airport. So from the airport, they will come. Did they tell you what to do at Yankuba's house? When we arrived there, the briefing was, uh, we are coming with uh, Kani, we are coming with one, I'm coming with one minister. So you don't, he don't know you. Like, you will be at the gate, upon our arrival, you will receive us. You salute, you salute us and welcome us. And come with him to the 
uh, for inside the house. At this stage, when you arrived there, where were the guards at Yankuba's house? To my surprise, we met no guard there and no family members, like his wife and family, wife and whatsoever. No wife, no guards, no nothing. So on that, is uh, Pali who told us that, uh, well, are we here for guards? I said, ah, well, we are here, and they said they are coming with one minister. <coughs> Whether they are coming to have gathering, meeting, or we don't know. So, and he said to me, he said to me, I, should, I will receive him at the gate. So you people will be somewhere, somewhere around inside the house. Yes. It's like that. And uh, during that briefing, who was present? That briefing uh, is Edward who briefed us. Who brief we we for? Was Peter present in the briefing? No, I can't see him. I don't see him. Was Yankuba present at that briefing? No, I don't see him at that briefing. <coughs> After the briefing, what happened? That uh, he left. Who left? Edward. And how about the four of you? What happened to We remain we remain inside the compound and the house. And where in the compound did you remain? Well, uh, where Yankuba is. You personally, which part of the compound did you stay? I stood at the gate. Waiting. Waiting. How about uh, Tumbultamba? Oh, they are inside the house. I remember, is it me and either Tumbul or, or Palu? Yes. We are outside. It's like we are inquisitive of knowing what is going to happen there. So we are not stationed at one place. We are rounding, you know, inside the compound and in the building to know what exactly is going to happen. Was the house locked at this time or was it open? It was open. You had access to go in, in and out of the house? Yes. Okay. And uh, what time of the evening did they leave, did Edward leave? It was just about night. After it was night. And what happened afterwards? We were there up to sometimes. Then, you know, Peter is the first person who arrived. He came, uh, parked his car, and rose inside the house. Inside the house, hiding somewhere else. Because we did, I didn't follow him there. He just passed me at the gate, telling me that they are coming. So he entered inside the house. In the next five minutes time, no, I saw Edward Yankuba with with a civilian. That may be the, well, a civilian rather. No, so. When uh, Edward entered, he said, that's the minister. That's the time I know this man is a minister. I did salute. You, did I you salute. know his name? Uh, um, they said uh, Korosis. Uh, I later know him as Korosis, Usman Korosis. And you saluted? I saluted him. Say, can, sir, welcome, sir. So said, okay. Then Edward lead, I follow him, and the minister was following me, coming inside the house. As we are entering, I just 
he had a noise, whip, give two, two stroke, and the bomb man fell down. A surprise, a surprise attack at the back, I also take a step forward. That's the Edu turned to me, that is the guy. There was like what they used to pound uh, pepper in the local language, Kuda, Kantura. That's what Edu take. Yes, and, and hit. Pesto in English. Yes. Kur and, in Wolof. That's and it? Hit and hit him for the third stroke. Everywhere was blood. And near him, there was a firewood stick where he picked and gave it to me, for me also to hit. I also hit. Then uh, 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 Yankua took the stick from Peter, uh, Peter, and he also hit. And he called the rest of the people. We all hit. The man died. Why would he call each one of you to come and hit? Mm -hmm. Because, to my understanding, he just want to implicate us. Because after the tree struck, this man, the place was full of blood. This man is already dead. He's already dead. Why give him us again and order us to whip him again when he's already dead? He just told Your view is he was already dead? My view, dead. yes. But the question is, you suggesting that he wanted to implicate all you? Are you suggesting he wanted all of you present to be involved in involved. the killing? Want to involve us. And what happened when this man was hit by all of you? And everywhere was full of blood. There you, you, you said all of you hit. I just want to get it very clear. And I'll ask you the question. You said in the beginning, Peter Singate first struck him. Is that right? Yes. Two. Two strikes. Did Edward Singate hit the victim? He did. Did Yankuba Ture hit the victim? He did. Did you hit the victim? I did. Pa Aliu yes. Gomez, did he hit the victim? Yes. Tumbul Tamba, did yes. he hit the victim? Yes. BK Jata, did yes. he hit the victim? Yes. All of you present hit the victim? Yes. Was there anybody else in the house? Nobody else. You said there was blood all over. All over. And what did you do with the body? From there, we carried the me, me four, myself and other men from four people. We carried the dead outside, put him on his private car, the car which brought him, the, the car he came with. And there we come back to to clean the place. The council members with Peter left. We, uh, so you said the council members that, they are, that is Peter, Ed, that is Edward, Yankwa and Peter. They left? They left. Do you know where they went? No, sir. So the four of you, what did you do after they left? We cleaned the place as it was before. But what did you have to clean? The blood, which was, which was, you know, you know, which was there from the man. These weapons that were used, where did you get them from? Well, the weapons are sticks. Yes. What was used by Peter, I don't see him. But that of Peter, uh, that of that of Edu was the uh, the 
is the what uh, wife used to use to farm the pepper while cooking. Do you know where these things came from? No, sir. Where exactly in the house did this event occur? Or in the premises, for that matter? No, to me, it's like I'm receiving him going to meet where they are going to have gathering. It's like we suspect of, I suspect of, you know, having gathering, but not a case like this. So while going, it's like a corridor. It's inside the house, uh, sir. Were you surprised that all these uh, tools were there uh, when this man was hit? It's like, you know, either Peter or Edu or whosoever, who, or, or, the, or the, uh, the owner of the house know exactly what is going to happen and he plays this uh, this thing, but that of the, the one using used used by Peter, I think that has been that has brought by him. But the firewood maybe belongs to the wife of the young Kuba and the uh, Kuda I, I mentioned in the local language. Uh, you just said that. Maybe Edu or Peter or the owner of the house knew exactly what was going to happen. Yes. Uh, are you suggesting? Are you suggesting? Are you suggesting that the stage was set and these tools were placed there in preparation for the murder? It seems to be like that. It was pre-arranged. You are under oath. Yes, please. The whole nation is watching. Sir? Say you are under oath. The whole country is watching. Yes, sir. Do you accept that Edward Singate, Yankuba Ture, Peter Singate, yourself, Alaji Kanye, Jata, BK Jata, mm -hmm. Tumbul Tamba, and Pa Aliu Gomez, all of you participated in murdering Secretary of State Honorable Usman Korosise. Yes, please. That is the truth. That is the truth. What do you say to the suggestion that Yankuba Ture was not in that house at all? What do you say to that? He was there. Would it be a lie if Yankuba Ture were to say that he was not there? He was there. Would it be a lie if he says he wasn't there? A big lie for that matter. Would it be a lie if Yankuba Ture said that he did not participate in the killing? He's lying, he participated. Do you know what happened to the body afterwards? As I said, the body was carried and put into the, his official car. And we After that, did you see the body again? No, we didn't. After the, com the council members and Peter left, mm -hmm. do you know where they went? I don't know where they went. Did you subsequently come to hear what happened to the body? After the following day, we heard that one official car was some assault at around uh, Jabantauto and 
and it was born into us. One uh, person was there who was born. Did you subsequently come to hear who that person was? Well, as, as that happened, all of us, hence we, we, we are present on the exercise of this event, we have second thought that this can be, you know, Usman Koro Sise. Did you subsequently get that confirmation? Well, we, we are not told that it's him, but it's like, as we said, we suspect because uh, the following day, we saw, uh, I saw Peter, Peter Singade with, with born hand. You see? So he's always unrolling his he, he um, uh, roll his sleeves. Anytime he unroll his sleeves, jacket, you see all the hands born. And we have second thought, man. Then this must be Peter, who went with this vehicle and born it. Where did you see Peter with his hands burnt? At the training school. What were you doing at the training school? I was at the, I was there as instructor. So essentially you worked with Peter at the training school at this time? Yes, sir. And you therefore saw him with his hands burned? Yes, sir. Did you ask him how he sustained those injuries? No, sir. No, sir. Did you at any point in time receive any debriefing about that incident? Uh, from there, one or two days, we are called at the uh, Edwards resident. Edward? Edward Singades resident in Fajar in Bacau. At this stage, what position did Edward occupy? If I can remember, it was the MOD, that is Minister of Defense. Yes. Did he occupy, you said he was leaving at vice residence. residence. Do you know what other position he occupied at this stage? No, you know, the resident was uh, occupying. I used to know that resident before. That is, I think, if, I, if I'm right, during Jara's time, it was, these are the two residents, Fajara and that place as BP's resident. In which location? Sir? Location? At, at uh, Cape Point. So you went to Edward's house? Yes, sir. Okay. Who went with you? Or who were, who were you there with? I was there with the said people, that is, uh, less... I think I don't see the Tumul, Tumul Tamba. I was there with BK and Apalu. Yes. Peter Singate, was he there? Peter Singate was there. Yankuba Ture, was he there? No, no. Yankuba was not in Peter, uh, it was resident at that time. Tumbul Tamba was there. That's what I'm Tumbul. I don't think it was there for deep briefing. Okay. So it means it was yourself, BK Jata, Pa Aliu Gomez, Edward Singate, and Peter Singate. Yes. Just the five of you. Yes. Okay. And what happened there? And Edu said, okay, uh, end of exercise, job well done. So our soldiers, this is what is expected. When you are called, we will respond, and we are given an instruction, you execute it. End of it. Did he say anything else? I can't remember other than this. Were you ever instructed 
to conceal the fact of what happened. Yes, that was stated. After, after his briefing, he said, you know, let's keep secret. I know you people can keep secret. So that is it. So he was asking you not to ever disclose, to disclose what happened. What happened. Did you tell anybody else after that what since, happened? Since then, I've never discussed this issue with anybody. Af after that event, how were you feeling? Sir, I was definitely feeling very bad. That even caused me to, you know, to, to leave the army because, you know, all along, the, my involvement always causing death. I asked myself, what is this? It's like these people are using me as tools. This is not what I expect. This is not why I joined the army. I joined the army to defend my country, but not to destroy my fellow Gambian people and moreover my brothers, my relatives. Look at this. My first action is I kill my own relative. Same Jarankas. And in the, in the execution, the one was involved whom I whom I shared the same basin with him. That is Lieutenant Davo. Suso. I told you in initial, Suso. Look at it now. Somebody whom I don't know. He have done he, he did nothing to me. Why putting me? Why condition me? Why forcing me to to I was like, I was working like off head, a dead man walking. I can't call myself. I was even in a haze, let my time reach. In December 97, I will leave. No matter what, even I am going to go back outside. But I will leave this. I will leave this up. I cannot sleep. I was confused. Sometimes he himself will call me, P Edward, giving me alcohol to say, take this and you, your temper will cool. I have to look at myself. I have offended Almighty Allah. And at the same time, I'm even adding by using alcohol a, a Muslim like me. Where I am, I lose in the, in the, in the you know, I have nothing in this world and rather than next world. I am in nowhere. I said to myself, when my time reach, I will leave. I was even looking all possible means for me to be dismissed, but it was not possible. It was not possible. I am making all effort for me to be dismissed. No problem. Let me lose all my service. Can because, you give us an example of what you did yes, to secure your dismissal? Sometimes I'll be, I cannot even sleep. I cannot enjoy nothing of Rudy if I don't drink alcohol and get intoxicated where I can somehow forget just a bit. See, I was confused. My people don't like me to drink alcohol. When I drink alcohol, none of my family members will be beside me. Look at that. One fine day, I was even in the campus. I was on duty. I said today, I don't know what is going to happen, but I'll make sure I am dismissed. I rose to officer's mess, pack all their you know, breakfast materials, keep them in my bag and get them to the one house. Early morning, they came for breakfast. There was no material. They said, where are these materials? Then the former CDS, was the duty officer, Lebanon Baji. You know, I can remember somebody was there. He said, it's Kanye who went to the uh, ante room. I saw Kanye entering into that room. Yes. 
and I was I was called at the uh, RSM's office. I confessed, yes, it's me. I was charged for stealing. Still, I was brought before you know, CEO. Then, if I can remember, Vincent was the CEO, Vincent Jada. Yes. I was fed up. I want to be. I want them to dismiss me. But Vincent cannot dismiss me. He reduced me to the rank of sergeant. I plead guilty of the offence, and he demoted me to the rank of sergeant. Did you tell them you wanted to leave the army? I told him right, outright. So I want to leave. He said, this is not the way how you should live. Why? I said, so I'm fed up. Yes. No, our soldiers, when they know that you, you want to leave, instead for them to help you, no. But they will keep on, if you are rank, on, rank holding somebody, they will reduce you, keep on reducing you. If you are not rank holding somebody, they will keep on detaining you because they have, we have that access of detaining somebody in our own cell. We have before taking you to my to or, 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 or military police. See, you eventually leave the army. Yes, I do. In December 1997, I leave. I leave on the 15th January 98. I surrender all their materials and go home. I said, I have not lived in this country. I have offended Gambian people. I have not lived in this country. I will serve as a slave to my country. And I'll pray to God to change for good so that, you know, at any given time, one way or the other, you know, it's like God has answered my prayers. I am praying for this gathering always to happen so as to complain. Yes, and tell Gambian people what have I did. Yes, because at some times, when I had my name in this audio, my family, my family don't even tell. Everybody was, pardon, it's like I'm alone. Sir, it's like I'm alone in the country. Yes, like I'm alone who do all these offense. Can you, 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 can you. And cancel everybody, Gambian people. These are the three events I participated. It's like I am the I am the chairman. Yes, but sometimes I sit back and say that has come because definitely Gambian people they are seeing me. I was a training instructor. I was a very confirmed instructor in, in related to my job drill. I, not only only in the army. What I'm saying, everybody is seeing me. I train all formation, all formation, immigration, po police, fire service, custom, custom. I train all of it, and they all admire me. That even caused my name to be, I think that even caused my name to be scattered like this. But in some time, some people may think that it's because of my wrongdoing, which is caused by these undesirable elements, whom I am far older than them. I am far older than them. I even senior them in the army. Look at these people. Because what? I'm a junior rank. They use me as a tool and dump me like this. I never traveled to even Senegal when I leave the army up to date. Look at this. My since, fellow brother, this is my position where I am now. Since, I'm in nowhere. I'm in nowhere. This is what happened. I am definitely, I am definitely completely wrong. I'm wrong, but, but I have no choice. I have no choice. Uh, Mr. Kanye, uh, since, since the TRRC started, did you talk to any of the people who were involved in the killing of Honorable Usman Korosise? I remember one day, it's Yankuba who called me. Yankuba who? Yank, Yankuba Toure. What did he say to you? Yankuba Toure, he said to me that, can you, where are you? I said, I'm at home. He said, okay, don't worry. Are you called by these people? I said, which people? 
He said, Tiharazi. I said, yes. He said, okay, I, also, I was also, you know, invited by them. But don't worry, forget about them. Yes. So, hope you didn't tell them anything. I said, sir, anything they ask me, I will tell them. He said, forget about them. They can't do nothing to you. We are, we are the head. We are the senior. We are the leader. I switch off my mouth. I switch off. I ring it off. Just another few minutes time, I was called by Fatumara Jahumba Sise. I was wondering how this, this lady, I never know her. Marlon Sundo, Marlon Tilly, I never know him, know her rather. How did he manage to get my number through Yankuba? But definitely for her, the advice, he, he advised me that is your mother alive? I say, yes, my mother is alive. He said, always do good for your mother. Let her pray for you. But don't mind about these people. I said, which, which people? people? Which people? He said, these terrible people. Terrible people. I learned that they call you. I know you through Edu. I think you are the old little. I say, I'm not an old little, old little Edu. I am not an old little Edu. I mean, I'm an instructor. I work under Peter in training school. But I have never been an old little any, 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 any council members. Did he tell you what to do mm. with regards to the TRRC? He didn't. He just, he, she said, she just said to me that, don't mind them. What did you understand that to mean? Don't mind them. It's like, let me not respond to you people. And that is the last thing I will do. That is the last thing I will do. My first call, when I was called here, when I was called by uh, uh, the singer, that I was called by singer, first call was singer that you are needed here. I stop all what I'm doing. I, I respond. When I came, I faced with Alaji Baro. I start conversation with him. This said man told me that, okay, now, hence, you respond, I will give you a chance to go because it's been a while. This is almost 22 years. Go and think about it. Feel free. Just go and think. Refresh your mind. All what you know and all what you did and all what you involved. We'll call you back. We'll invite you and come and tell us. When you spoke to Yankuba Ture, did you understand him to mean from what he said, that you should not talk to the TRRC about what happened in his house. Is that your understanding? Sir? When you spoke to Yanku Bature, did you understand him to mean that you should not talk to the TRRC? Exactly, that's the one. Let me not worry. Let, let me not mind you people. That is, let me not talk to you people. And, and this is all what I was praying. Since I left the army, I said I am not going anywhere. All my fellow people, all my people, some all other people travel. But I said, no, I am not traveling. I, am, I will pray to God, for God's forgiveness, and pray for any gathering will happen. So as where well, I will come and confess. And, and when you spoke to uh, Fatumata Jahumpa Sise, did you also understand her to mean that you should not talk to the TRRC. Council, that's what I said. He really mean that. So, uh, Mr. Kanye, yes, here sir. you are. You're facing the Gambian people. Yes, sir. You said you were involved in three activities. Yes, sir. And the first activity was the killing of Fafanyang and Basiru Kamara, Basiru Kamara at Yindum Barracks. Yes, sir. You did that with... Edward Singate. You also participated in the execution of six officers at the forest near Nyambai, correct? Yes, yes, sir. And you did that with council members, correct? Yes, sir. Including Sana Sabali, Edward Singate, Yanku Bature, Peter Singate, Sadibu Haidara, Babu Karjata, and the other list of council members, correct? Yes, sir. Including Guba Jami, Kanilai, 
ایڈوائزرز ہیں فاتی جے سی بی میلی بی اینجائی انجائی پونکا دوز آر دی پیپل یو نیم آئی کار ریمان بائی ایسا دی آر آفٹر یو آلسو پرٹیسپیٹڈ ان دی مردہ آف فرمہ سیکٹری آف سٹیٹ ہنریبل اسمان کروسی سے یو سیٹ ایٹو کورٹ ایٹ دی ہاؤس آف دین سیکٹری آف سٹیٹ او ان دی ہاؤس آف یانکو بطورے یانکو بطورے Council member at the time. Yes, sir. And you said that murder was carried out by Peter Singate, Edward Singate, Yanku Bature, yourself, Alaji Kanyi, Pa Aliu Gomez, BK Jata, and uh, Tumbul Tamba. Yes, sir. Tumbul Dai. These three events yes, sir. is your confession absolutely correct? Yes, sir. Did you participate in any other crime? No, sir. Madam Chair, I would leave it at that and I'll ask the commissioners to answer, to ask questions if they have any and the witness be given the opportunity to say whatever he wants to say to the Gambian people. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, lead counsel. Thank you, witness. Commissioners, Kinte. Uh, Aslam alaikum, Kanye. No. Um, I remember you said on the fateful day of the 11th of November, uh, as you entered the camp, you were halted, gun pointed by one Mr. Kali. Yes, sir. And who marched you into the guardroom? Yes, sir. And uh, later you were advised to join Marong and that you will be working with Marong. In fact, before joining Marong, you were asked to look into the truck. You were given a pistol and then you were asked to shoot. But fortunately for you, that was fortunate, there, there, there was no bullet and it did not fire. Yes, sir. Later, you were told um, to to follow Edward and Papa Nyang and Kamara. I forgot the first name. Were ahead of you, and you sought. Um, you did not tell us where you acquired the equipped gun. Who gave it to you? Because that would be helpful to us. Who gave you the gun? We know Edward instructed you, and you joined him to do to execute the service. But who gave you the gun to um, uh, shoot at these guys? Uh, that one was not clear in the uh, testimony. It's like uh, as I said when I was halted at the gate, at the back gate, and double out of the guard room. I said. Uh, yes. Then everybody, uh, the, ev the everybody was scattered, and the place was scattered. So everybody with with the uniform, uh, with the weapon, with their person, uh, with the rifle. So I was dressed in green dress when I was told, advised by one of my brother, to go with him to his house and change dress. When I changed dress, that's the time I also rose to the armory to look for rifle. Um, you are misunderstanding me. That one was the July 22nd event. That was when you came well dressed and you came and changed. This time round, I'm saying 11 on November, 11th, 11th November. 11th November. Yes. You were gone pointed and marched into guard room. Double up to the guard room in green dress. And in that case, from, from your house, you were not armed. I was not armed. You were given a pistol to shoot at these people. It was empty. Yes. Fine, you came down. You were, remarks were made. Yes. But then Edward asked you to join him to execute those two people, Papa Nyang and uh, Kamara. Mm -hmm. I said you did not tell us where you were armed to be able to ex uh, exercise this, uh, perform this exercise. Who armed you would be important to the commission and how you were armed.
like you know, I said, when I change dress, I think you don't understand. When I change dress in camouflage, I rose to the armory to get my rifle. At that time, the ammunition was everywhere. Yes, guard room, RSM's office, you know, it, it's all over. So it's just, you, as you take your, your draw your rifle, all rifles are with magazine, one. Now it's you to go and load, load it for your own safety. Yes. Anaka? Thank you, Madam Chair, Commissioner Kar. I'd love, like to know what, how do you think we can reform the army to prevent such things from happening again? Sir? Um, uh, can we hold that? Because he'll be giving his final statement. Okay, we can hold that. Uh, Commissioner Jones? Commissioner Jones, um, Mr. Kanye, you did um, explain to the commission in your testimony that since the TRRC started, two individuals called you one of which is Yanko Bature and the second part of Mata Jahun Pasise. Mm -hmm. Whilst you already explained your relationship with Yanko Bature, which is understood, could you please explain to the commission why Fat Mata Jahun Pasise would call you? Did you ever have cause or need to discuss the three events you narrated to the commission with her? Yes, I, 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 I don't know if, uh, how did she get my number. I know it would be like from Yanko but I don't know. I don't know her. I've never met up with her. I have no relationship with her. You know, I was even wonder. There was there is no relationship between me and her. Nothing absolutely. So that's why I switch off my phone because she cannot, you know, encourage me or tell me something. Only the advice he gave me that, oh, is your mother there? I say yes. Uh, do good for your mother. Let her let her pray for you. That's it. I have no relationship with her. Not at all. No single day. Commissioner Diallo. Hello. I'm wondering how it happened that you were singly handpicked to participate in this crime for which you are very sorry. Can you probably enlighten, on, enlighten us on this? Why were you handpicked? Sir, so, Imam, it's like my life is in the hands of Sana. Failing to obey. Failing, it's like my life is in the hands of uh, Sana, Sana Saboli and Edward. These two people. Failing to obey any instruction from them, being a junior rank at that point in time, it, results, it will result to anything that is, I'll be, because, you know, 75% Jarangas are victimized. Either one or the other. Either been killed or been arrested to be detained. So, he was even wondering why I was not captured, or I was not even part of the attack in Bakau or anywhere, I don't know. Why this man is still here? It's, it's like that how I see myself. So that is why I was so close to, as he posted me, that is the uh, CEO's office. It's been a while I didn't even visit my family, because I was scared that any time I leave the barrack, when he come, he asked for this man, where is Kanye? is out, it means something. At that time, Sana was, I cannot even uh, label him. Council? Uh. Okay. Witness? I know I was going to invite him. You have the opportunity now to speak to the Gambian public and to let you know that members of Koro Sisi are also in the audience. So please, if you would like to apologize to them also. Thank you. Council, 
My name is Aladi Kani, as I mentioned at initial stage. Definitely, world world is seeing me, not only Gambian people. I am apologizing the whole entire Gambian people, and more especially the victim family. I never know, as I mentioned, soldiers involved in this death. They are very good soldiers. They are very productive soldiers. They are very pious. And for me, they do nothing absolutely. This small boy destroyed all the good soldiers in the country, in Gambia. And later, though, Mr. Koro Sise, I don't know this man. I have done nothing for me. I am totally guilty of anything, any label against me in relation to this 11 November issue. I am completely guilty. It even cost me, you know, my health condition was very terrible right now. Yes, definitely. I cannot sleep. The only thing that will even lead me to somehow to have a sleep is when I pray for, when I pray to God. I pray for Turaka. Sometimes my pain will be rest. It's like I'm walking, I'm a dead man walking. I was all along praying for, for Gambia to organize a gathering like such, and which has exactly happened. It's like God has answered to my prayers. I am apologizing entire Gambian people. I am definitely wrong. I am guilty of all the three, all the three I, I have participated. In, it caused death. And the soul belongs to Almighty Allah. Without this gathering, you no, know, you know, for me, I am not secured. I am not even safe. Praying to God, that is God's forgiveness. Yeah, God can forgive. But how about between you and somebody whom you offend, whom you offended? I am completely guilty. I am completely wrong of the offense committed. Please, Gambian people, I am on my knees. I am The, the, the victim family and entire Gambian people. And I am ready, Council, please help me to see, meet with this victim family, to apologize to them at all costs, to apologize to Gambian people. I am completely wrong of offense committed by me. Considering my rank at that point in time, 22 years my nose from my age, what age I'll be. And at that time I was a, and they just use us, they just use me as a tool. No benefit I have on this. No nothing absolutely. No in cash, neither in anything. No promotion. Nothing absolutely. If not, you know, you know, some good Gambian people, then I, I can be a madman because my living condition will be very terrible. My living condition will be very terrible. Yes, sometimes people tell me, have faith. Yes, it is stated in the Holy Quran, have faith. But you know, you have good sabab and bad sabab. So these people, I categorize them on the bad sabab. I categorize my father as a good sabab who, who, who you will know, not take me to the school to learn in order to join the to, to, to go have a better world, to help him. And these people are destroyed by the, you know, the, 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 the undesirable element. And where are they now? They leave me here and go. Even to walk in the street by, by foot, I will feared sometimes. I feared. It will come to my mind that, yes, when I'm killed, no problem. Yes.
Look at it. My brother, my brother is sitting here. My senior brother, same father brother. I cannot even face him. I am totally guilty. Hello, Gamel brothers and sisters, young and old. Sisters, brothers and sisters, young and old, elderly person, Imam, I'm here. Definitely, I am completely guilty. Yes. Even among the Lord, one of my sisters is here. I cannot even face him. Face her, rather. I cannot face her. And action Jaranka, the two Jara, that is Jara West and Jara, Jara East. Because I was born in Jara West, Samkia, and brought up in Jara East, Breng. Mashiri is from Barokunda. Barokunda from Barokunda come to Sudukun Sudukun Breng. I am apologizing all the Jarankas. All the Jarankas. Who, he who knows me, if you ask them, Kanye is in the army, they even wonder how did he manage to join the army. Because I was not, at that time, I was not, it's like it comes to me by luck. I was not physically fit at that time, but I have no choice to join the army. I have no choice. I'm jobless. I'm jobless. So people help me to join the army, but not to go and destroy my own fellow brothers and brothers, my own brothers, my own uncles, because I can take Koro to be my uncle or my father also. I don't know him. Look at him, my own brother, who is from Jarabarokun, whom I share the same basin with him, Suso. Lamin Dabo, from, from Jara Breng. My stepmother from, is from the same compound. He's seeing me. He's hearing me. And Bashiru Kamara, the same Pakalinding, Pakalinding and Sankhya. Where? Where I am now. Please, Kanzul, help me. Help me. Between me and God, I'll pray, continuous prayer and keep him fast for God's forgiveness. But the most important thing, that is the victim family and entire Gambian people. And entire Gambian people. Definitely. El Arar, it's me, El Kani. Please forgive me. Forgive me. Everybody is seeing me. Yes. I even want this to come out plain. Let everybody know. Kani, Kani, they are talking. These are the three events I participated. These are the three events I participated. Please, I, my health condition is very bad. I'm under high blood. An answer to your question? Or are you okay? Not really, okay. Uh, perhaps maybe we can yeah. leave that to other witnesses. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Kanye. Uh, Madam Chair, before we release the witness, mm -hmm. I just wish to advise the entire population not to take the law in their own hands. Mr. Kanye has done his duty to the Gambian people. He has come before the commission. He has testified. He has confessed to his own crimes, um, I encourage everybody to leave the law to take its course and not to try to do anything to the witness. And to also warn all those people who are attempting to tamper with witnesses of the TRRC to desist from such activities because it's quite obvious to all that that is a crime a tampering with witnesses, tampering with evidence is a crime, and everybody is being warned to desist from that. Um, thank you, Mr. Kanye, for your testimony, and uh, the chair would discharge you, and uh, if you at any point in time feel that you are under threat, your life is at risk, please report it to the commission and the necessary action would be taken. I take it that the Gambian people would appreciate the fact that it's about time we start doing things properly and not behave in the unlawful manner in which the previous regime used to behave. We cannot take the law in our own hands. 
we have to allow the law to take its course. Uh, thank you very much. Council, I also want to advise young soldiers presently in the Army, senior officers and senior officers, for them to be diseased from giving junior officers unlawful order. Look at me today. Soldiers, you are seeing me. At that point in time, I'm a junior officer, a junior soldier, rank of couple. I was given order by senior officer, starting from junior officer, that is, junior officer started from second lieutenant to captain. Senior officer started from captain to major to major and above. And look at this. There is a code that we obey all orders, either verbal or written. Yes. But you know, verbal orders should be selected, senior, senior officers. Look at my position today. I'm in nowhere, and that is caused by what the senior officers. Nobody else but these two undecidable elements. In take 12 of Gambia National Army, and in take 15, I am in take 5. 460. 460 personnel in the Gambian army. My life, my life was destroyed by junior officers. By obeying them. Look at this now. It's like son and father. You obey your, your you obey your father, giving you instruction which will, which is not good. Army is like that. The highest standard of discipline is there. But definitely, government has to look into the army very well and see how best to be resourceful and talk to junior officers on the issue of verbal instruction. Thank you very Sir. much. Really, today has not been an easy day for the Commission. Uh, for the family members of Korosise who are present, I hope that knowing the facts will bring closure to your pain. It has been a long journey before you knew what the truth behind his passing away was. We hope that this really helps to ease the pain. And once again, on behalf of the Commission and everybody here present, we extend our condolences to the family once again on the loss of a great son of the soil. To the people of the Gambia, especially those who think that the TRRC is a witch hunt. Not at all. Not at all. For that, we are a toothless bulldog. I want to draw your attention to the mandate of the TRRC Act. That spells out our role very clearly that we are here to create an impartial record of violations and abuses of human rights from July 1994 to January 2017 in order to address impunity, promote healing and reconciliation, and prevent a repeat of such violations and abuses. We give victims and perpetrators the same opportunity to come here and narrate their role in the events that occurred during this period. We hope that by establishing the truth, Gambians will learn lessons from what happened in the past and take the de determination that never again in the history of this Gambia will such atrocities take place. Mr. Kanye? On behalf of the fellow commissioners, the legal team, and everybody here present, we would like to thank you for coming out, for stating it as it is. It is not going to be easy for you. The lead council has told people not to take the law into their own hands, but we thank you for your courage for coming out to state it as it is, because it helps us in creating the record that we have been mandated to do. We will continue the journey with you in terms of healing, in terms of reconciliation, in terms of other issues that need to be done. The lead council are there, the 
brilliant uh, psychosocial team are there and the investigative team and we will accompany you on the journey. Thank you very much. Uh, this session is closed. It brings us to the end of the second session. We will meet here again on the 11th of March 2019 at 10 o'clock. Thank you.